Peace be with you. Welcome to The Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now, in this episode of The Dean Show, we're going to be talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, when someone enters Islam, Islam is simply an Arabic word which means to surrender and submit to the Creator alone, to worship God Almighty, not the creation. And then you also agree that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was indeed the final messenger of God. And this would automatically include, not exclude, all the preceding messengers that came before him, including Jesus, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and all the other messengers that God sent to guide out of his love humanity with the same message. Worship the one God, the Creator, not his creation. But how can you be assured that Muhammad was a messenger? Who was this, this man that so many have written about? And there is no other human being that his life has been more authentically recorded at his life. So we're going to be talking about this on this episode of The Dean Show because we got to figure it out now before death comes. What's the purpose of life? Why we're here? And in Islam, we have all those clear answers. But how can you be sure that indeed Islam is from the Creator? we got to examine this man's life. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you doing? Good, brother. Yourself? It's good to have you back on the Dean Show. Jazakallah khair. My pleasure. All the way from Aussie, Australia. Australia, yes. The oh. Aussie's there. The Aussie's <laughs> there. Alhamdulillah. Now tell us, when I, o when I opened up the program, I talked about uh, we had to examine the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be yes. upon him, because there is a message there. Yes. We want to look at the messenger, see if his life, evaluate yes. it. Uh, and you can in contrast because he came with the Qur'an. So you yes. can know indeed is the Qur'an, what's his motive? Uh, yes. Did he do this for money, for fame, for power? Or is he yes. indeed a messenger? Yep. So you can call, it's one man making the claim. So you can put him on the witness stand and evaluate yep. his life. In contrast to, for instance, uh, the Bible. Yep. You have anonymous books. We're trying not to, to um, yep. uh, insult anybody or disparage anybody. But uh, if you want to do the same with the Bible, for instance, yes. you have a lot of anonymous authors. Yep. You cannot do the same thing. Yep. Is this correct? True. That's right, yes. So that's why we're... We're, we, we want to, um, it's in human being's nature to, to acknowledge that there's only one God, worship the Creator, not the creation. But the other part of accepting Islam is to agree that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Yes. How can we be sure of this? Sure. Very important question. So let's go in, in, in different segments. Point number one, we will see what does Quran say about Prophet Muhammad. Then we will see what does the other faiths speak about a person like this Prophet Muhammad. And then we will see the secular sources such as encyclopedia and other great scholars of, of other faiths or even people with no faith. What have they got to say about Prophet Muhammad when they study or read through his, his biography? And this will give us you know, a, a very clear picture of what he is and what he is not. Now, point number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Muslims in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, Surah number three, ayah number 31, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni, yuhbibkum Allah, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wallahu ghafuru rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Muslims and says to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to them, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, that if you love God, if you love Allah, fattabi'uni, then obey me, then follow me. Allah. In return, Allah, the Almighty God, will love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And forgive you your sins. Wallahu ghafuru rahim. Allah is forgiving, most merciful. There is not any sin in Islam. If someone repents, Allah will not forgive. There is not a single sin like that. Allah is very merciful and very graceful. Now let's see what Allah is saying about Prophet Muhammad. He's saying, if you love God, you've got to obey the Prophet. If I was there at the time of Moses, and I believe in one God, who would I have to believe in to believe in that one God? I would have to believe in Moses. I can't say, standing in front of Moses saying, I believe in one God, but I don't believe in you. I would not be a Jew at the time. So you can't bypass Moses. Yes, you can't man. bypass Moses. And then if I come across the time of Jesus, and this is where the Jews have gone wrong in theological aspect. They said, I believe in Moses, and I believe in God, but I reject Jesus. So what happens according to Christianity, rejecting Jesus is wrong. That's what even Muslims say. So if you say, I believe in one God, but I, if you stand in front of Jesus, you say to him, I believe in one God, I love Moses, but I reject you. You're gone. You're making a mistake. Similarly at this time now, you can't say, I believe in one God, I love Moses, I love Jesus, but I reject Muhammad. Because the moment you reject the prophet of God of that time, you've actually rejected the entire concept of God. Islam is not claiming Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the only prophet. Rather, Islam is actually claiming Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. As mentioned in Surah Azab, Surah number 33, Ayah number 40. Wa khatam al nabi and he's the last prophet. Let's now see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muslims regarding Prophet Muhammad. Who is Prophet Muhammad for Muslims? Allah says in the Quran in various places, Ati'u Allah, Ati'u Rasul. 
Obey Allah and obey the Prophet. And this is same exactly for Jesus. He is the light, the truth for the people of his time. So Prophet Muhammad, he has to be the Prophet of his time. So Allah says, Atiyu Allah wa atiyu Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Prophet. Now this is mentioned in the Quran in, in great detail. It's mentioned in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 32. Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 132. Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 59. Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 69. It's mentioned in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 72. It's further mentioned in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 52. As well in Surah Muhammad, Surah number 47, ayah number 33. And Surah Talaq, Surah number 64, ayah number 12. In all these different places, Allah commands in the Quran, you have to obey Allah the Almighty, and you have to obey the Prophet. Let us now see what further Prophet Muhammad said about believing and following him. He said in the famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 9, hadith number 251, and hadith number 384. He said, all my followers will enter paradise, except the one who refuses to enter. And the companions asked, oh Prophet of Allah, who would refuse from entering paradise? The Prophet said, anyone who obeys me will enter paradise. Anyone who disobeys me will refuse from entering paradise. So the equation in Islam is very simple and clear. You believe in one God and you obey that God and you obey the Prophet of that time. If you obey the Prophet and obey God, you enter paradise. You don't obey the Prophet, you're not obeying God and you don't enter paradise. The equation is simple as that. Now what if someone, uh, our, our brothers in humanity, the Christians, they say, look, uh, there was a lot of false prophets that came yes. and they mentioned Joseph Smith, for instance. Yes. Uh, what what, what would you right. say? Yes. Now see, let's go to the Bible and see what Bible says about a future coming prophet. And this is very important. It goes into the Bible in the Old Testament. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. It says, God says to Moses, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, like unto you. He will not speak by himself, but all that I shall command him to speak. Now this prophecy... Christians generally claim this is Jesus. But you got to understand, the verse is saying, I will raise them up a prophet. So if they agree this is Jesus, then you got to agree Jesus is only the prophet, not God. Second, it makes you a clear distinction that it can't be Jesus because the verse is saying, from among their brethren. So this is the Jewish community, the Israelites. And God is saying, this prophet will be from your brethren, meaning from your cousins. The cousins of Jews the whole world knows are the Arabs. All right, whatever you know, issues we have it between us, we'll solve it. But this is between the cousins. The Arabs and the Jews are the children of Isaac and Ismail, both who were children of Ibrahim, Abraham. So both are cousins. So God is saying they will be from among the cousins. So it has to be no one else other than the Arab prophet. Amongst the Arabs, after Ishmael, peace be upon him, Ismail, alayhi salam, there was no other prophet other than Prophet Muhammad. So it has to be Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It goes further in book, uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. It mentions the name, Hikko mamitakim vikullo muhammadim. The translation reads, he is altogether lovely, his mouth is sweet. Yes, we agree Prophet Muhammad is altogether lovely, but you don't translate the noun. So the verse reads, Hikko mamitakim vikullo muhammadim. Why im? In Hebrew, the respect is added by adding im. Eloh, Elohim. Muhammad, Muhammadim. So even the name Muhammad is still there in the original manuscript of Hebrew language of the Bible in Songs of Solomon. So in Songs of Solomon, Muhammad, peace be upon his name, name is, is mentioned, mentioned there. there. Let's, so how could you get away from it? Let, let's uh, stop there, take a break, and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Back here on The Dean Show, so we're giving our brothers in humanity, the Christians, who look to the Bible for guidance, yeah. uh, they can reflect see, over right. these by yes. these uh, verses from the Bible to see yes. that there was a messenger coming Come. after uh, Jesus. Jesus. It's yes. not talking about the Joseph Smith or no, anybody like definitely this. Definitely not. It's yes. pretty it clear. Be, yes. You also even have Muhammad, peace be upon his name, yes. in the Songs of Solomon, Solomon. Solomon. Chapter mentioned. five, verse sixteen. Give us something else to, sure. to reflect over. We'll go further into the New Testament now, in the words of Jesus, peace be upon him. There are verses where Jesus speaks about another comforter, prophet or helper coming in the future. This is mentioned in the Bible in great detail in Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16. Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 26 to 28. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 26. Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verses 19 to 21. Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 25. Book of Judah, chapter number 1, verse number 14. As well, we will see in some of the verses in detail, Jesus is saying, Jesus is asked a question by the Jews and, by, and even to John the Baptist. So the Jews are waiting for three people. And they asked John the Baptist in Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. They asked him, are you the Elijah, the Elias? He says, no. They say, are you the Christ? John the Baptist says, no. 
they say, are you that prophet? So you see, there are three distinct personalities Jews were waiting according to the Old Testament. So one is the Elijah, the Elias, which is actually John the Baptist. The second is the Christ, the Messiah, that is Jesus, peace be upon him. And they're asking a third person, who is that prophet? Referring to Deuteronomy 18, 18, that prophet from among the brethren. So these are the three distinct personalities that the Jews were waiting. They asked the similar question to Jesus in the Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 25. They asked him the same. Are you the Elijah? Are you the Christ? Are you the prophet? So he says, John the Baptist is the Elijah. He says, I am the Christ, Jesus. And that prophet is still anonymous, is still remaining. We Muslims are informing our Christian friends that this is referring to that prophet, that is Prophet Muhammad. Let's go further. In the very words of Jesus, peace be upon him. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 7. Now, Jesus is saying in the red letters in the Bible, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, in this verse, Jesus is making a very clear statement to his disciples. He's saying, I got to go and the other one needs to come. Generally, the Christians say this comforter is referring to the Holy Spirit. If it was the Holy Spirit, Jesus always calls the Holy Spirit in the Bible, Holy Spirit. He never referred to the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost with another title as Comforter. Why suddenly in this verse, Jesus is saying, He will come. Unless I go not away, He will not come. So for example, I'm coming from Australia, and you are here in America, Brother Eddie. I say to you, unless I go not back to Australia, the other Amer Australian speaker will not come. Can that Australian speaker be me, or you, or our brother you know, here with, with us in the studio? Obviously not, because I'm saying, unless I go not back, he will not come. So anyone else, but not from this room. So when Jesus was saying this statement, the Holy Spirit was right then and there between them. And Jesus is saying, unless I go not away, he will not come to you. So it's a very clear distinction. It has to be a new person. And this comforter in the Greek language is parakletos. Parakletos translated would mean the one who is praised. Mm -hmm. The name Prophet Muhammad comes from the Arabic word hamd. Hamd means praise. And Muhammad means the one who is praised. So Parakletos meaning and Muhammad's meaning are really matching. Whereas Holy Spirit is not the one who is praised or the one who praises. That's not the title given to him ever in the Bible. And Parakletos, that Greek word in this verse, is not used for Holy Spirit ever in the Bible any other time. So it cannot be the Holy Spirit. It has to be a future coming prophet. And let's complete the myth. Gospel of John chapter 16 verse 12 to 14. Jesus further says, I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth shall come, he will guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak by himself, but all that he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Now Jesus is giving four amazing characteristics of this comforter. First of all, he calls that he is a spirit of truth. Once again, Jesus didn't call Holy Ghost. Once again, Jesus didn't call Holy Spirit. He said, spirit of truth. So a human soul is a spirit of truth in the Bible language. Second, he says that I, I have more things to teach you, but I can't teach you. You can't accept them. But when he comes, he will bring you all the truth. All the truth. How to clean yourself in the toilet to how to rule a country. From cradle to the grave. Everything is there in this religion. Whatever you want to do. Friendship, family, marriage, divorce, death, whatever. Everything is mentioned very clearly. You become a ruler of the country, what is the punishment? What is the process of education? How do you deal with all of this? It's very clearly mentioned in this, in, in, this, uh, in this scripture. So Jesus is saying he will teach you all things to come. Secondly, it also says that he will not speak by himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. This is again a human prophet's character in the entire Bible. The prophets don't speak by themselves. Whatever they hear, they speak. The Holy Spirit, on the other hand, is one of the Trinity, according to the Christian belief. So does God speak by himself or does he take command? If the Holy Spirit is God, he gives command. He doesn't take command. So it cannot be the Holy Spirit. It has to be a human prophet. And the human prophet is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, referring mm -hmm. there. The last thing he says, he shall glorify me. The Prophet Muhammad is the only non-Christian prophet who has made it an article of faith for all his followers, billions, to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, and glorify him. No Muslim is a Muslim. We don't take the name of Jesus unless we add Peace be upon him. We glorify his name. Hope that makes it very clear that Prophet Muhammad is the prophet that he's expected. You definitely got a lot of people, sincere people, uh, thinking 
And we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Back here on the Dean Show, and this was geared towards more people uh, of people. I mean, even even Muslims. Uh, this only substantiates and also increases one's iman, faith, uh, knowing that indeed, I mean, even in the Bible, he's mentioned. Uh, we didn't even mention the Hindu scriptures, Buddhist yeah. scriptures. He's yes. also there's prophecies yes. there. People can go ahead and yeah. look this yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, but now, somebody who maybe like most people, they don't read the Bible. Yeah. Some have even gone away from it because the Trinity doesn't make sense. Yeah. They, don't, they don't believe Jesus. They believe he was a messenger, more like the Islamic yeah. belief. And what really fascinated me is when I really started to look into Prophet Muhammad's life, uh, not to talk about all the scientific facts that are in the Quran, the prophecies in the Quran, that it's indeed uh, you know, a book that's been preserved, it's authentic. Yeah. But then I look back and I look in his life, uh, you know, and you see that he was... Uh, the most trustworthy, the sources that we have today said he was uh, an upright and honest man yeah. who was surrounded by others who were upright and yes. honest men. Why would he lie? What's his motive? Yes. Money, power, it didn't add yeah. up. He just gave his whole life to God. Yeah. So what do you say to somebody sure. who's kind of skeptical? They hear a lot of negativity yeah. about him on the news, yeah. but they're seeking. What do you say? Truth. Yes. See, uh, let's see, uh, take it this way. You know, people of different faiths have different uh, approaches. They have different scriptures to believe in. So if you say Islam and Christianity, the major two monotheistic religions, we've just seen that. You know, Prophet Muhammad is a prophet according to both Islam and Christian scriptures. Let's see some of the other things. People who don't believe in these scriptures, how do we speak to them about Prophet Muhammad and the prophecies? Let's see people who are atheists or rationalists or humanists or they just simply believe in no religion, how do we speak to them about Prophet Muhammad and his prophecies or, or his prophethood? Mm -hmm. um, let's just quickly see Hinduism for, for an instance. Hinduism has a book called Bhavishya Purana, which speaks about the future. It says in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khand 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8, meaning verses 5 to 8. It says, there will come a man, a Malecha, meaning a foreign person, who will, who will be from, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone who will be on the deserts. He will come and his name shall be Muhammad. His followers will have beards and not shindis like the pundits, the Hindu scholars. It says that these will be the people who will eat all sorts of four-footed animals, the pet animals, the tamed animals, except the swine. These people, they will call people to prayer, referring to Adhan. It says these people will not purify themselves by dipping into the water, but by fighting against the enemies of God, referring to jihad. It further says that these people will be called Musalman the Muslims. So it is very clear in the Hindu scriptures there is someone going to come by the name Muhammad. He will come in the lands of deserts uh, and he will be the one who will go further. If go, further says, O Raja of India, you do not have to go to his land. He will come to your land and purify you. So it is very clear for them that there is a future coming prophet and that his name, his name is Muhammad and they should also be following that. So this is mentioned even in the Hindu scripture. Even in the Buddhist scripture, Gospel of Buddha by Karas, in page number 217 and further up, it says, Gautama Buddha was asked by his disciple Ananda, what do we do after you're gone? Who will teach us? So Buddha says, I, I was not the first Buddha, nor will I be the last. After me, there will be another Buddha. Buddha meaning the enlightened one. After me, there will be another Buddha. He will be the one who will guide you. He says his name shall be Maitriya in Sanskrit, which is in, in Hindi language or uh, Pali language, Mettaya. Mettaya means, Metta means great, Metta, Maha Metta. Maha means great, Mettaya, Maha Metta would mean the great person or the great mercy. Muhammad, the man who is praised or the man of mercy. Maha Metta, and in Arabic we have Muhammad. Maha Metta is pronounced in loose language as Maha Met. The Arabic word Muhammad and the Hindi word Mahamat. Mahamat, Muhammad. Same pronunciation, little bit of different because of the language difference. So this is uh, so even in the Buddhist scripture, there is a Buddha going to come by the name Maitriya, Sanskrit pronunciation Mahametta Mahamat, which is enough, no one else other than Muhammad. Wow, and th these would be the most enlightened. Enlightened one. This is the, these are the me this is he the message. He will guide you, and and Buddha says, I have got followers in hundreds. He will have followers in thousands. Uh, give us something, for instance, uh, the, the Encyclopedia Britannica, sure. which I was referring to. Yep. Discussing, yeah. you know, so now we will see how would we respond to people who have no faith, for example. So Encyclopedia Britannica, secular source, says in volume number 12, a mass of detail from early sources shows that he, referring to Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an honest and upright man. 
He was, it's saying that he's the best man. He's, he's an honest person. He's an upright person. Let's see what Mahatma Gandhi, one of the most peaceful nonviolent revolutionaries, says in, his, uh, in, in a speech which was recorded in U Young India magazine in 1920. He said, I was sorry when I closed the second volume of the biography of Prophet Muhammad for there was not more for me to read of the great life. Imagine a revolutionary person is taking inspiration from Prophet Muhammad. So anyone who is fighting, for, uh, trying to bring a revolution, Prophet Muhammad is an inspiration for them. Let's see what La Martin, a French historian, says in his book, um, Historic de la Turc, published from Paris in the year 1854, volume number two, page 276. He says, if greatness of purpose, smallness of means, and astounding results are the three criteria to judge any human genius, who could dare compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Sir Bernard Shaw, a Western intellect, says in the middle of World War I and II, recorded in his speech in Genuine Islam, published from Singapore in the year 1936, volume number one, page number eight, he says, he, Prophet Muhammad, must be called the savior of humanity. If he were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, he would have solved all its problems and brought the much needed peace and happiness. So I'm saying when these modern people, these intellectuals of the society, with no allegiance to the Islamic faith, are attesting to the character and the greatness of Prophet Muhammad, then how could any rational person reject the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad? I would like to conclude by saying that if a person is appreciated and loved by his followers, he is great. But imagine a person who is appreciated even by his enemies. I call that person the greatest. And let's see what Prophet Muhammad is said by his enemies. There is a group, a lobby called Orientalism. And one of the very famous Orientalists by the name W. Montgomery, his job is to abuse and you know, take out mistakes in the character of Prophet Muhammad. He writes in his book, Muhammad at Makkah, published from Oxford in the year 1953. In page number 52, he says, to assume Muhammad an imposter, it makes more problems than it solves. Imagine an enemy of Prophet Muhammad is saying, if I assume Prophet Muhammad as a false prophet, it makes more problems for us to prove him a false prophet than it solves to abuse him. He goes further and he says, moreover, the only person in the West who is poorly appreciated is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So even the enemy is agreeing that Prophet Muhammad is an appreciative person, is a great person, has to be a true prophet of God. Who else could be matching that prophet? In conclusion, I would say, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Saba, Surah number 34, Ayah number 28, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَآفَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except to the entire creation, to all human beings, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, as a giver of glad tidings and a warner. But many people are unaware of you. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانًا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Thank you very much. We're out of time. Uh, very beneficial and for those who really reflect you gave people a lot to reflect over and for the sincere person um, this is very enlightening may Allah guide all of us I mean thank you very much Jazakallah. and thank you for tuning into the Dean show again subscribe if you haven't already and I mean it's very just evident it's clear I mean when you look at his his life and you and you just you scrutinize his life sincerely if you want to make jokes make fun and you know you uh, don't do things sincerely. You're going to find every excuse in the book uh, to turn away. But for the sincere truth seeker, uh, when these facts are presented, I mean, they're astonishing. Uh, and it behooves you to really get to know this man. We cover the uh, prophecies, his name mentioned. He's mentioned by name in the Bible. So for the Christians there uh, who are already, already having problems with this Trinity, Jesus being God, now they look at the concept of God in Islam. And Islam obviously just means submission to the will of God, like in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and they look at what Islam calls people to, it, it just makes sense. And you look at what Muhammad, his whole life, how it was lived. He, for, he forsook this whole world. And when some people try to bring up these silly arguments of Joseph Smith or any of these, these uh, people, you look at their lives, you cannot compare the overwhelming amount of evidence that we have to see that he was indeed, I mean, he mentioned uh, the Buddhist scripture, the uh, Hindu scripture, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, you know, all these great sources that just say the most incredible things about him. So it definitely behooves you to get to know this man while at the same time really reflecting what's the purpose of life. You're going to find one way or another, you know, 
uh, but when, when you look sincerely deep in yourself and you realize that this life is short, I've got to figure it out. And then you have people such as Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all of them coming with a proposition for you. You worship God alone, you do good deeds, you get to Jenna, you get to paradise, or I'm just going to do things my way. And then what? You're going to hit a dead end. So do things the right way, do it God's way, and that's why these messengers were sent out of God's love to direct you to the right way, the way to be successful in this life and the next, to avoid the hellfire and to get to the paradise because when death comes, it's too late. It'll be too late. And that's why we're doing these programs out of the love. So subscribe if you haven't. Again, already call us. You know what? You're almost there. You agree that there's nothing worthy of worship for the creator of the heavens and the earth. Muhammad is his messenger, and this would automatically include Jesus and all the preceding messengers. Call us. If you have some doubt, just one doubt, call us. 1-800-662-ISLAM. And we got operators standing by to answer your questions. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you.